Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah, peace be upon you all, and welcome to the second episode of the exciting topic of Islam and natural philosophy with Dr. Basil al -Tai. Dr. Basil, how are you doing today? Yeah, I, I am fine, thank you. I'm doing well. Alhamdulillah, and today we are going to talk about the revival of Kalam. Um, after we have learned in the last episode, an introduction uh, to what is Kalam and its different schools and what's Daqiq and what's Jalil, what happened uh, to eventually lead Kalam to be banned from Islamic discourse and um, then um, the revival of Kalam and, and he's going to talk to us uh, why do we need this and, and we're going to discuss that and also uh, the contemporary formation of Kalam what can we take from Kalam today in this age to really benefit both on our uh, cultural roots and on our entrenchment and understanding to science. So, Dr. Basil, um, very excited to, to listen to what you have to uh, teach us today. So, uh, uh, the stage is yours, sir. Thank you, Ahmed. Uh, yeah, today I would be talking about uh, several subjects in this uh, field. Uh, again, it is it falls actually in the within the historic uh, background of uh, the top the subject of kalam in general uh, as i said uh, briefly in, in the previous episode the methodology of kalam is different from the methodology of the philosophers mm -hmm. you know uh, uh, most Muslim philosophers try to accommodate the Greek philosophical trends within the Islamic worldview. Mm -hmm. This reconciliatory approach was started by Al-Kindi, who died, the philosopher. He's half philosopher, half mutakallim, actually. <laughs> Many people ask me from time to time, they send me messages, is Al-Kindi uh, a mutakallim or philosopher? He's half philosopher, half mutakallim. He died in 868. Uh, that's the ninth century. And was this approach was further developed by Al-Farabi, mm -hmm. died 950, well-known philosopher. And Avicenna, mm -hmm. Sina, who died uh, 1036. Mm -hmm. uh, by the way, these are not Persian philosophers. Al-Kindi is Arabic philosopher. I mean, I say mm -hmm. that to uh, give the right attribute to the people. Mm -hmm. And uh, Farabi is a Turkish. And uh, Ibn Sina is from Khawarizm. Uh, this trend of uh, reconciliated trend uh, uh, was followed by almost all uh, Muslim philosophers, including Averroes, Barrushd. Mm -hmm. Barrushd died 1198. Mm -hmm. uh, and uh, he wrote uh, a famous book, Tahafut uh, uh, Al Tahafut, trying to answer questions raised by Al Ghazali. Abu Hamid Al Ghazali was also not a mutakallim, not a philosopher. Mm -hmm. Al Ghazali is an identity. And he is a great mind, a great, great mind, a great thinker, as we will see later in other episodes. So he is he is a type of his own. Exactly. Hmm. Exactly. Uh, uh, Al-Ghazali tried to show uh, uh, the loopholes in the philosophical arguments uh, and uh, why it leads to atheism. Aha. <laughs> uh -huh. Yeah. Okay. It's, uh, Philosophical arguments will very, not very, very smart. So he raised he raised he raised the red flag very early. Uh, yeah. And he wrote and he wrote the incoherence of the philosopher. The half of the philosopher. Abel Rushd, uh, about seventy years later, wrote uh, the book of uh, the incoherence of incoherence. The half of the half of. In his book, Fasl al Maqal. Mm -hmm. The decisive treatise, the, the decisive treatise. Averroes strove violently to show that Islam can accommodate the view, the views of Greek philosophy through what? Through reinterpretations of the verses of the Quran. Oh, 
So completely contrary to the approach of the mutakallimun who actually use the Quran as inspiration. They don't try to, to, to fit it in the I Greek. hope so, but yeah. why should we go yeah. into reinterpreting the Quran? Hmm. By the way, by the way, there is a verse in the Quran which says nobody knows the full, uh, the accurate, the most accurate interpretation of the Quran except God. No. And those knowledgeable people say we believe in it as it is because it is the revelation of God. وما يعلم تأويله إلا الله والراسخون من العلم يقولون آمنا به. ما آمنا به كل من عند ربنا. ابن رشد says we read it like this. وما يعلم تأويله إلا الله والراسخون في العلم. يقولون آمنا به هو يقولون آمنا به I don't know. In that case it is I mean he tries to you know, uh, deviate from the actual meaning, Arabic meaning. Hmm. And then Yaqulun will not have the subject. Will, will, will not be connected, Yaqulun Amannabi. They yeah. say we, uh, who says? Uh, yeah. Ta'wilahu is different from Tafsirahu, by the way. Yeah. Ta'wilahu, something else. It's yeah. deeper, much deeper. Yeah. Uh, uh, Ta'wilahu, to know all the knowledge, all science in details, then you can uh, uh, interpret the Qur'an properly. But yes. by the way, this is not only interpretation. It is origination, Ta'wilahu. Yeah. yeah. Uh, he, he, here is uh, that I mentioned this to show there is a very, very accurate, very important difference between the philosophical approach and the Kalam approach. Yet this defense ultimately proved unsuccessful. I mean, defense of Ibn Rushd, mm -hmm. what philosophers and philosophy, uh, was unsuccessful. Ghazali already strong evidence, mm. strong, uh, uh, and uh, very effective in persuading the elite of uh, the inadequacy of the philosophy. Now, a days, some uh, writers uh, 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 claims that Al-Ghazali uh, was the reason for the decline of Islamic civilization. Really? Yeah, this is all nonsense. Like uh, uh, Tyson, director of the uh, planetarium of, of New York. Yeah, yeah, Neil deGrasse Tyson, Tyson yeah. Exactly. Mm. He claims that without knowing, without reading Al-Ghazali, he have heard from somebody perhaps or uh, that uh, Al-Ghazali uh, uh, considers mathematics the work of devil. Okay. <laughs> there wow. is no such thing. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Some of the mutakallimun who lived during the 11th century and later especially those uh, whose alliance uh, was still with the Mu'tazili, for example, borrowed some of the philosophical arguments in their endeavor to support the proof of the existence of God and mm -hmm. to uh, uh, coherently theorize his attributes. So this is a you know, connection between Kalama. But this comes late. And here we, I should uh, re remind uh, my audience and yourself with um, one important thing. The Mutakarimun are actually uh, divided into two generations, two big generations. The early mutakallimun, mm -hmm. which were, which appeared during the 8th, 9th, and 10th century, perhaps right. the 11th century. Uh, uh, 11th century, yes. Well, no, the 10th century. And then you have later, the late mutakallimun, they are called. Mm -hmm. The The... the Original mutakallimun were pure. They didn't mix with philosopher, uh, philosophical arguments. Uh -huh. They presented their own methodology and argument. The late mutakallimun started, who started with Al-Fakhr al-Razi, Al-Fakhr al-Razi. They borrowed some of the, that what I mean, during the uh, 11th century, they borrowed some of the uh, 
arguments of philosophy. Other the Deen right. al for example, al Taftazani, uh, Nasafi, hmm. they, all, they all borrowed phil philosophical arguments uh, because I would show later <laughs> hmm. Hmm. the Kalam principles were not reasonable sometimes. It looked hmm. non reasonable because the knowledge at that time. Hmm. We're different from our uh, the knowledge at our time. Aha, and, I, see. Uh, I should point to one important thing. Hmm. If you ask a physicist, a scientist, a physicist, uh -huh. Uh -huh. and present daqiq al-kalam to him before the few the first few years of the of the uh, 20th century, uh. he will say you are you are telling me nonsense. Uh. These because... principles of kalam, which mm -hmm. I will talk about in the next eight episodes, mm -hmm. are nonsense. Mm -hmm. Atomism, uh, indeterminism, uh, these are nonsense. Uh, the world is deterministic. The world is continuous, not discrete. The, the world, world is static. Is eternal, eternal. Yeah. Eternal and static and everything. It's only in the 20th century that we came to know that the world has a start, yeah. the, 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 the world is atomic, that the um, indeterminism is prevailing law uh, of nature, of nature. And I will explain that later. Uh, but before 1900, we couldn't say Kalam and Kalam principles means have any, any position in science or scientific knowledge. Uh, I see. So it was not reasonable to the philosopher at that age because exactly. the science of that age was so less uh, developed to completely appreciate the, the, the jewels of the Hikil Kalam, let's say. Yeah. Well, uh, yeah. you know, during the century, the 8th century, the 9th century, uh, Kalam was actually Caliph al Mamun. Mm -hmm fostered the Mu'tazilis. Khalif al-Mamun uh, died at uh, 133. And he was young when he died already, 45 years or so old. So he is from the 9th century. He fostered the Mu'tazilis and enforced their view, the views in Jalil al-Kalam especially, upon the religious clerics. Okay. This action resulted in much agony and social unrest uh, among Muslims. Some of the famous clerics, like Ahmed ibn Hanbal, mm -hmm. were killed and tortured. Others, like Shafi'i, escaped to Egypt to Egypt to find safe haven. Anyway, mm -hmm. anyway. Some of the famous clerics, as I said, of Ahmed bin Hanbal is a great cleric to be tortured, etc. This was wrong. It was yeah, wrong. It was wrong to enforce the ideas of mutakallimun or kalam, of, of especially of the Mu'tazilis, on, on people. And Al Mutamah Awakil, who died in 861, uh, uh, changed the philosophy, uh, the, the, the policy, changed the the, the official uh, policy, and he said we should not, uh, we should discard the Mu'tazilis, and he released Ahmed ibn Hanbal. Since then, Mu'tazilis were weakened. That is, let us go back, it is in 860-something, 60s. Uh -huh. in, uh, yeah. About 150 years later, the Abbasid Caliph, inspired actually by the Ham Hanbali ideas, Al-Qadir, Al-Qadir Billah actually, who died in 1031, issued a decree. It's called mm -hmm. Sifa Al-Qadiriya or Risalat Al-Qadiriya, which for the first time explicitly formulated Sunni doctrines. Uh, uh, the decree condemned Mu'tazilis. Mm -hmm. uh, 
nearly, and even Ash'aris. Okay, so both sides. He, so he says nobody talks about this anymore. Yes, and mm. affirmed the uh, veneration of the first four caliphs, Rashidun, mm -hmm. and the companion of Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. He affirmed that this is the right track that every Muslim should follow. Uh, so let's do without kalam anything. In fact, not only let's do without kalam, but the wrong thing is to prevent kalam and kalam debates. On the other hand, if you look at what was going there at, at that time, I mean, for about three centuries, mm -hmm. you will give you will give Al Qadr Billah the right to ban kalam because there were a lot of quarrels, a lot of problems, social problems, etc. Uh, very, uh, very uh, huge agony uh, among the fuqaha. Mm. Uh, in, so he, in, he preferred, he preferred the, the, the social stability rather uh, versus the intellectual uh, debates because they were closing so much social unrest. That's right. They didn't follow the right track of you know, of Islam, they went too much. They, 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 they were too much uh, in in argumentation and uh, free thinking. Okay, mm. Mm. you are a free thinker. Uh, Islam doesn't prevent you from thinking, but you should not deform the clearest Islamic rules. Yeah. Um, and these rules were given by the Quran. Yeah. And when you consider the Quran temporal, for example, it's mm. a problem. Yeah. But again, there were this was a tragedy for Kalam and Mutakallimun because uh, uh, people were prevented from acquiring any book of Kalam. Oh. The books of Kalam were burnt. Mm. And if if the police find a book of Kalam in your possession or in a possession of anybody at that time, then you will be jailed or will be whipped, actually. Wow, yeah, yes. very aggressive. Yes, yeah. very aggressive. Uh, lashes, 20 mm. or 40 lashes, I don't know at that time. Mm. And that is why we lost a great legacy yeah. of Kalam. But thank God, that some of the mutakallimus or some of the people who had in position the books of Kalam, they uh, put it under different titles, you know. <laughs> they write on the on the cover <laughs> a different title. For example, the book of Tadkira. Uh -huh. There are many Tadkira books. Maybe yes. Tadkira means the after after death, you know. Yes. Uh, yes. After life, Turkey, yes. Jannat, uh, Jahim, uh, yes. uh, etc., the hell mm -hmm. and, and, and the heavens, yeah, is also Tadkira. So, yes, Tadkira were used in, in the as title for some of the valuable Kalam books, <laughs> especially the, some books of Taqiq al Kalam, uh -huh. and, that is, and that is how we now can talk accurately about Daqiq al-Kalam and the Islamic views of in, in topics of natural philosophy uh, so accurately because we have authentic authentic contributions of the Mutakallimun. It is not interpretations of their of their ideas, it is the exact wording that they have written. Yeah. Anyway, uh, uh, since that time, uh, uh, Kalam, actually, you can say, has gone into uh, completely out of the scene. And now we are looking to reform Kalam. Reforming Kalam, to reform Kalam, there have been several attempts. In the last two centuries, by the way, in the in the twentieth century, uh, in the uh, second half of the nineteenth century, mm. and during the twentieth uh, uh, century, 
there have been several attempts to reform Kalam as Muslim thinkers uh, at, uh, in our modern age recognize the need for that. Unfortunately, none of the attempts showed success, showed success till now. Hmm. Reason is, as, as far as I can see, one, stubbornness of Islamic society against Kalam. Second, ignorance in respect of the use and application of modern Kalam. Even when I deliver some lectures, you know, or some talks here and there, people start asking, what is the, the need for Kalam? What is the application of Kalam? What is the usefulness of Kalam? There is nothing. Kalam is Kalam. It's, hmm. it, 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 is, it is of no use. It is just uh, like its name. It's just words. It's Word. uh, no yeah, application. They think, they think it is just... They think that, yeah. The other reason is difficulty to deal with the original Arabic text. Hmm. The Arabic text in Kalam is very difficult. Huh. The Muhammad Abed Jabri, who is a, a Moroccan thinker, he died the past years ago. He says Arabic played in Kalam the role of mathematics, which uh, uh, is played in physics. Mm. In, in contemporary physics. Yeah, yeah. So even, see, even as you were explained in the last episode, some of the arguments of Karam were primarily rhetoric arguments, which primarily uses rhetoric, language. It's language. Yeah, it's lingual. Language. Yeah, it's lingual, yeah. Because language, language is not a communication means only. It is a way of thinking. Actually. Yes, yes. Yeah, it's absolutely. a program of thinking. Mm. Arabic language is the best example. And I hope Chomsky can talk about this one day if he <laughs> has time left. <laughs> now Chomsky, for example. Yeah. But there is also Father Samurai, for example, can talk about this. Uh, he's mm. a great uh, uh, Arabic uh, scholar. Mm. Mm. Maybe, maybe, maybe you should interview him one day. I hope so. Father Samurai, yes, he's in the yeah. United Arab Emirates. Hmm. Uh, the, the fourth reason is no academic institute is established to deal with this type of work systematically. Hmm. No academic institutes. Okay. And, and no funding is given to such a project. In the last four, five, four, five years, uh, uh, there were uh, organization or uh, uh, called Kalam, Kalam Research and Media, uh, which was funded by the John Templeton Foundation. But unfortunately, the management of this Kalam Research and Media uh, missed the point. Mm. They didn't, they didn't uh, 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 achieve uh, the goals for which they were funding, funded with large amount of money. I think they were funded with uh, something like uh, uh, six million or more dollars wow. over, yeah, over the period of three or, uh, or four years. But they, they didn't manage the right thing. You know, I, I contributed to this uh, endeavor, to this mm -hmm. program. Uh, so several writing and thank I thank them for publishing my book, God, Nature and the Cause. But many yes. other people have also contributed their manuscript, but they were not published. Ah, I see. Yeah. Uh, so we have a problem there. If we have to revive Kalam, we need to to make it a mainstream academic studies. And we have many questions, many problems. I have myself a full-fledged systematic approach to uh, uh, initiate, at least initiate, uh, serious academic studies and applications and the programs uh, relating uh, uh, contemporary physics uh, and formalizing it 
in the philosophical context through kalam and daqiq al-kalam through daqiq but if you ask me what about jaleel al-kalam oh jaleel al-kalam needs complete reform hmm. complete reform and yes. as i will show later my program goes on uh, using or uh, reforming daqiq al-kalam first which is much easier hmm. especially that i'm a physicist and then afterwards one can go to jaleel al-kalam and reform jaleel al-kalam or rebuild completely jaleel al-kalam on the basis of the new daqiq al-kalam and this needs the work of maybe hundreds of scholars hundreds of scholars hundreds of phd and msc uh, thesis being uh, done uh, and the programs and the clerics uh, discussing jaleel al-kalam it's mm. not my job it's not my job i i cannot do that is i will lay the foundation maybe for that you know uh, the time left for me in this uh, life but uh, other people can continue certainly yeah. so that was about the, the reforming kalam yes uh, and the, by this yes i would end uh, my talk today because this is the most important subject reforming kalam is the most important item we need uh, to do uh, during the these years especially we are as you know we maybe at the lowest hmm. point <laughs> in our history in, in our history yes yeah yeah so uh thank you very much dr basil for this uh, interesting uh, second episode of our series islam and natural philosophy what are we going to be talking about next week dr basil yeah i will take uh, now uh, i will go into the principles of the the five principles of the kalam Excellent. how i got them how mm-hmm. i could uh, recognize these five principles with lots of quotations from the original mutakallimun mm-hmm. uh, and the original ra- writing writings books of the mutakallimun and then one by one i go through atomism uh, temporality the uh, recreation principle the indeterminism of the world and the space time integrity so the the audience will see something really new never inshallah. heard of it inshallah look looking looking forward to it, dr basil so uh, everybody uh, um, we thank dr basil for this great episode and looking forward for the upcoming one so see you in the after show and see you next week and assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh thank you thank you dr basil assalamu alaikum